Good morning and welcome to La Havre United Methodist Church. Today is October 9th, and we're so grateful that you've joined us for our virtual service. Will you pray with me for a moment as we begin? Gracious God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the opportunity to worship. We thank you for your music and scripture and song. Lord, bless us wherever we may be in this moment that we might be one in you, one in Christ, and one with each other. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Good morning. The announcements for October 9th, 2022 are as such. October is going to be a very busy month for the church. We're having a special event on October 10th at 1030, which is being sponsored by the church and co-sponsored by the La Habra chapter of PEO. All are invited to a workshop led by the League of Women Voters on the ballot initiatives and propositions for the November midterm election. Come and hear about the issues Monday, October 10th at 10.30 in the Fellowship Hall. This is a nonpartisan event. Our next short-term Bible study will begin the next day, October 11th on a Tuesday at 10 a.m. This series is four weeks and we'll be reading and discussing the book written by Dr. Chris Taylor that she presented here at church when the devil came down to Chinatown. Bring your own coffee and let's learn this amazing story of the brave Methodist women saving the lives of very young women in the 1900s. A memorial service for Pastor Doug Hodson, who passed away a couple of years ago, will be held on Saturday, October 29th at 11 o'clock. Please call the church office to RSVP if you're able to come because a luncheon is being served following the service. We're supporting the North Orange County Navigation Center, which houses and provides support for our friends that are experience, experiencing homelessness. They need some basic supplies, and each new resident is provided with some personal items. If you would like to support this, we need the following. Small boxes or bottles of shampoo, conditioner, deodorant, toothpaste, the things you would take on a trip, perhaps. Combs, brushes, men's and ladies deodorant, men's and ladies razors, shaving cream, hand sanitizer. One gallon zip lock plastic bags will be used to bag this material. We're hoping to make about 200 hygiene kits in October. See Susie Bush, Bush if you have questions or would like to help. The coffee money is going toward this project in October, so come and have coffee with us. Breakfast bags for the La Habra Community Resource Center are in need of shelf-stable milk and also fruit juice. If you're at the supermarket, please grab it. It seems to be in short supply. The goal is to pack 150 breakfast bags for our homeless community in October. We've actually today bagged about 150, and so we'll be bagging again in November. Thank you. Please join me for the call to worship. Let us pray. God who created everything and everyone, we ask you to be with us now in this sacred place. Send your Holy Spirit upon us that we might bless your name. Help us to care for the seeds which are the word of God, the living words your son shares with us. Let the hard work of sowing and tending be crowned with an abundance of life. Bless all of those that care for the garden. Lord, come and walk with us. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Oh, 
Good morning. My name is Bob Cadman. I'm here on behalf of the Stewardship and Finance Committee. First off, I must apologize for some information that I gave you last Sunday. I told you that our proposed budget for the coming year was $281,920. That was incorrect. After reviewing all the, the numbers this past week, we discovered a duplication. Our correct proposed budget for next year is $274,600. If you have already written your check to cover the full amount of the budget, again, I am sorry. I would appreciate it if you would write a second check for the $274,600. And as punishment for this error, I did not have dessert after dinner last night. If you were in church last Sunday, or if you watched the service on the video, then you know that we are in the middle of our financial drive for 2023. I was able to prov provide a little bit of the history of, of La Habra and the establishment of our church in the 1890s. We also met several of our local farmers that I had hired to simulate the actual planting of the seeds to establish our church. I personally am amazed that a handful of people like our farmers could come together and establish this very church, our church. The grit and determination required to make this happen is truly an amazing act of faith. But the faith of those early settlers does not make a church last for 125 years by itself. Every year, brings new challenges for us, and every year, people like, like you have stepped forward to meet each of these challenges. The faith is still strong within the La Habra United Methodist Church. Those seeds that were planted 125 years ago are still growing, but the planting needs to be tended to every day. This morning, we have Farmer Tricia with us again. Farmer Linda could not be here this morning as she is out plowing the lower 40. Remember, last week when our, our farmers planted the first seeds in that bare, bare ground, many years have passed since last Sunday's planting. We now have a strong, healthy growth in, of our church. But each of us here today are the farmers that must tend to that, the health of our growing church. This morning, Farmer Tricia will, will tend to the needs of our planting. First, she will remove any weeds that are trying to choke off the growth of our church by tilling the soil. Next, she will trim off some of, some of the dead wood on our plant. These are programs and issues that have either run their course or issues that we, we have been able to resolve. Removing such dead wood would allow us to grow in different, more fruitful ways. Now our farmer will add a little fertilizer to help feed the church through the challenges of the coming year. Finally, we add the water, which is the faith of every member of this church. Our faith keeps the church strong and growing. Many of you picked up your pledge cards last week, and we have more cards here if you need them today. This is your opportunity as a farmer of this church to show your faith and invest in the future of the church. Next week, you will have the opportunity to come forward and place your pledge cards in a basket as we complete the financial drive. Thank you. Prayer is such an important part of a Christian's journey. And so I encourage you for just the next few moments, find a comfortable spot wherever you might be and allow your heart to open. Let your mind be um, full of thoughts of those that need prayer, things in your own life that maybe you're praying for or your family, friends, or ultimately your community of faith. We need to be men and women of prayer each and every day. So pray with me now. Lord God, we thank you for this church. We thank you for the opportunity to be reminded how 
for so many years, the men and women of the Methodist Church here in La Habra were faithful stewards who tilled the soil here on this property and, and grew this amazing church. Over the years, literally thousands of people have come and heard your word and have been blessed. And so now, Lord, I ask that you would remind us in our deepest parts of our soul how important it is to support this mission. The mission that you taught that we should be men and women of prayer, men and women of the word of God, men and women of the spirit. Lord, let that be part of our expression of love and let it be a reminder that we need to give faithfully so that each and every person going forward into the future for another hundred years might find this place, this sanctuary, a place that they can call their spiritual home. Lord, we're so grateful for the hard work of the men and women who came before us. So let us be faithful in our time in this moment that we might give and give well. Lord, we thank you now for your blessings, for your healing, for your comfort in times of distress. Lord, we're aware that each and every one of us in our daily lives needs to seek you more faithfully so that we might be one with you and hear your still small voice. Lord, we remember those in our community now that need extra prayer. We know that they have sought you in their hearts and souls, and we ask that you would allow us to intercede now for their spirit and healing. We pray for our brother Bob, who's now uh, moved to rehab. He's had surgery and he's doing much better. But Lord, he's discouraged, and we ask that you would continue to strengthen him and bring healing to him quickly that he might be able to return home. Lord, he is such a strong person of faith, and he trusts in you, and he seeks you, Lord, to bring healing and strengthen him. We pray for our sister Kathy, who's also doing better, still in the hospital, but Lord, we know your healing hand is upon her. Continue to strengthen her and bring healing to her and her full recovery. We pray for those in Florida who have been affected by this terrible hurricane, Lord, this past week. Lord, we're aware that some have lost homes and possessions, but even more desperately, Lord, we're still seeking to find anyone who might have been lost. Lord, we ask your healing hand be upon those who grieve, to those who are afraid, to those who've lost someone in their life that is irreplaceable. Lord, human life is so precious. And in this moment, Lord, we are reminded that each and every one of us has lost someone we love at some time. So let our hearts be bound together as men and women of faith as we pray for them and pray for the swift renewal of their, play, of their homes. We pray for our sister Janelle who continues lots of doctor appointments and ongoing healing. And we ask that you bless and keep her, strengthen her and give her comfort and peace as she pursues ongoing appointments. We pray for Paul as he continues to heal from a fall and Lord, we know he's doing better. Continue to strengthen him that he might be back to full strength. We pray for Janet. Lord, we are told that she's doing much better and her chemo treatments are working. And Lord, we continue to ask and intercede for her that you would continue to strengthen and use the medicine, the doctors, Lord, everything at your disposal to bring her to strength. And Lord, we pray for our sister Peggy, who also is having lots and lots of doctor appointments and had a procedure this week. Lord, we ask for strength and wisdom for her and for guidance from the medical teams, Lord, that are caring for her. Lord, you use medicine, you use these wonderful men and women of science to bring healing to our bodies. And so we ask you, Lord, to strengthen them as they do their work. And Lord, for all these things, so many spoken and yet so many unspoken, we ask that your healing and your love would fill our lives and hearts. Remind us to pray each day. And in that prayer, may we be reminded that it is your will that we seek. You taught your disciples to pray this way. And each and every time we pray, you told us to say, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who've trespassed against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The gospel reading today is from the book of Mark 
chapter 4, verses 1 through 9, the parable of the sower. Again, he began to teach beside the sea. Such a very large crowd gathered around him that he got into a boat on the sea and sat there, while the whole crowd was beside the sea on the land. He began to teach them many things in parables, and in his teaching he said to them, Listen, a sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seed fell on a path, and the birds came and ate it up. Other seed fell on rocky ground, where it did not have much soil, and it sprang up quickly, since it had no depth of soil. And when the sun rose, it was scorched, and since it had no root, it withered away. Other seed fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it, and it yielded no grain. Other seed fell into good soil and brought forth grain, growing up and increasing and yielding thirty and sixty and a hundredfold. And he said, If you have ears to hear, then hear. May God bless the reading and hearing of his word. Will you pray with me? Gracious God, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts all together be acceptable in your sight. Lord, you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Just a moment of privilege. I wanted to add a little bit of information to the announcements that Kathy shared earlier. First, we have a wonderful event coming up next Saturday on the 15th. It's our annual Arts and Crafts Fair. We're so excited to share all of the artisans and uh, various crafts and uh, art, paintings, jewelry, everything you can imagine, woodworking, all of that will be available here on our campus. It's our annual event and we're so excited. We'd love you to come. Starts at nine in the morning, goes till three. It's all outside so you'll be nice and safe and we're excited to offer the artwork and the crafts and the creativity of all the members of our church plus many of our community who are, will be here um, sharing their talent. So come and join us. It's completely free and you'll find some fun things to shop, some, maybe some vintage costumes, some stuff to get ready for Halloween, all kinds of creative and wonderful things. So please come and join us. Also, I wanted to just highlight the uh, offering pledge forms that you should, re you should have received in the mail. Each and every member of the church got uh, one of these. It's not just about money, and I wanna be clear. What we're hoping for is that you'll prayerfully look at this pledge and say, what gifts, my presence, my prayers, other opportunities to share and be present in worship. As United Methodists, we promise to bring our prayers, our presence, our gifts, and our service. And so this form questions each and every one of those categories and offers an opportunity for you to make a pledge, not just for the dollars that you might be able to give, but for the time and the energy and the projects that you might be interested in serving in. God loves a cheerful giver, and we ask that you would prayerfully consider and fill this card out. As Bob mentioned, we'll have you bring these back on Sunday. If you're not able to be with us in person, if you're still watching on video or if you're in another part of the country or if you're traveling, feel free to fill one out and drop it in the mail or just send me an email. You're ha we're happy to receive your, your pledge even if it comes virtually. Give me a call or I'd love to uh, speak with you and talk to you about how you might serve the church in a way that works in your life. So I thank you for considering that and praying about it. As we begin our sermon today, I, I wanted to uh, consider this, this sort of the second image of our stewardship campaign, and that's tending the plants. And sometimes that's pruning the plant. It includes the loving hand of a gentle gardener. I want to thank Bob, by the way, and all of his helpers who over the last couple of weeks have used their creativity and their imagination and shown us how the planting and the growing and the patience that is needed in a plant and how to bring something to life. It's not so much fun always running the business of a church. I know we think of ourselves as ministry and how God has blessed us with faith and kindness and grace, but there is a little bit of business that has to be attended to. And so I wanna thank Bob and the finance team and also our trustees who are so wise 
and use their gifts to help build up this community of faith and has sustained us through these last few years where we had many challenges. You might remember last week we saw an illustration. We saw the painting, the planting of seeds. They were so faithful. They, they took the, the mixing soil and the miracle grow and the water and the seed and with their good and gentle hands, they brought to life what we now see today. It takes that, all of that, for a plant to grow. Most importantly, as we recall, it takes patience and kindness. It takes exper an experienced gardener to wait for the plant to take root and for the seeds to sprout and begin to come to life. As you see today, we have the beginnings of a pretty healthy plant. I commented to our gardeners earlier this week that last week as we used fertilizer, I, apparently it actually came from a chicken coop, um, and I was serving communion. I hoped and prayed that as people came up to receive communion, they didn't smell the fertilizer. They'd actually used some real fertilizer for our plant that we were growing. So I guess that is an analogy in a way of all healthy things. Really anything we want to see grow and flourish, we have to use real fertilizer. Whether it's a plant, a church, or an organization, we need something to stimulate it to grow. Whatever we are humanly hoping for, whatever outcomes we are hoping for, it takes a foundation. And in the case of plants and trees and all living things, it takes some good dirt. I can remember once as a kid walking home from school. It was one of those very rainy days, and you might remember I grew up in the San Francisco Bay Area, so it gets a little colder and a little wetter up there than here. And it was one of those days where I had a long walk home, and I was pretty wet. And after a while, you're so wet that you just embrace it. I was probably eight or nine years old at the time. And as a kid, and as kids with will do, one of my next door neighbors joined me as we walked home, and we loved to find the big puddles. The big puddles, you know, that grow along the side of the, of the curb or along the grass or the edge where the water sort of congregates. And pretty soon we were jumping in the puddles and making water, making, splashing each other and literally becoming soaked. And after not too long, we were covered in glorious mud. Needless to say, by the time I got home, my red PF flyers that I was wearing that morning were full of mud and dirty beyond all recognition. So as I got to my front door, I heard my mom gasp in horror and demand that my shoes, my jeans, my jacket, literally everything I had on that was wet, be deposited at the front door before entering her brand new clean house. And of course, some of you may have had moms like mine. My mom always seemed to have white or some very light color carpet, which didn't lend itself very well to muddy kids coming home. <sighs> Sadly, my red PF flyers were never the same. As the days and weeks went by, they got left and were sitting on my porch. My guess is they sat out there for several weeks. One day, I can remember leaving for school and I looked down and they weren't on the porch anymore. They had somehow been moved down to the bottom of our stairs. Of course, still dirty and covered with mud. That rainy day had probably, I'd probably seen the last of those tennis shoes at that point. But the neat part of the story is as I went to look at my shoes, I noticed right next to them, a little bunch of dandelions had started to grow. As I picked up one of my shoes, I noticed a little tiny sprout of a little tiny dandelion was just beginning to grow out of the dirt that had accumulated at the bottom of my shoe and it had found a place to make a home. Now, of course, most of you are thinking, why didn't she just wash her tennis shoes? Remember, those were the days where you could throw your tennis shoes in the, in the washing machine. Or I could have just washed them with the hose. I honestly can't remember. But what I do remember is that at that age, I loved to blow the little fairy tendrils off the dandelions, as all kids do. And I'm sure myself or nature or some amazing way, one of those little seeds had taken root in the dirt in the bottom 
of my tennis shoe. The kind of fun analogy here is that my shoe had become the good dirt for this seed to take root. At that point, I'm sure I realized I probably couldn't wear them again because now I had things growing in my shoe and how could I possibly ruin that? I loved that my jumping in a mud puddle and actually getting into trouble that day ended in a very unexpected and fun event. I don't think I thought too hard about it then. I, I guess now I'm using it as an adult. I can see what Jesus was actually saying when he talked about this parable. It was, you see, the good mud that I had been jumping into that winter day. It was the combination of that good dirt, the rain, and the seed that somehow found its way to my shoe. It wasn't the end of my shoe. It was just the beginning of something new. I don't remember when or how, or at some point my mom probably just threw those red tennis shoes away. But as an eight or nine year old, it was clear to me that nature and faith and patience had a way of making a bad situation better. It's clear in this metaphor that Jesus uses that the sower is Jesus. The seed is the word of God, the good news that Jesus is proclaiming to the world. And of course, the seeds are the word of God going forth out into the world. It's also illustrative of the patience of the gentle gardener, that with every new plant, that on every occasion, a plant needs some tending. It might need some trimming, it might need some more soil, it might need watering, but the plant can't grow on its own. It needs people, humans, and nature to sustain it. The gardener is needed always in order for a plant to grow. Thinking about growth and new things, the imagery that we've used here as we've shown something growing, I believe we've forgotten that the key to growing anything is patience and love and, of course, good dirt. The question that we might ask ourselves based on all this is, what kind of dirt are we? Are we good dirt or are we unhealthy dirt? I think in this parable, that's kind of what Jesus is asking. He's asking us to be the good dirt. Let's look again at what Jesus is saying in the parable. First, he mentions the seed falling on the path. So the question is, are we the path? That as soon as we learn something new about God, we have that aha moment, and in about five minutes, we forget. We gain some small insight, we, we see something dimly, maybe begin to glimpse it, but after that initial moment, it's just gone. We forget all about it and go on about our day. Or are we the ground that's like the rocky path that Jesus mentions? Are we without much depth? Have we forgot to continue to go deeper with God, to learn about him? And then once we do learn a little, that learning is stunted because we've forgotten to practice it each day. Or maybe it was just a one-time thing that we read God's word and got an insight or an inspiration. And it begins to grow in us for a day or two or a week, but then sadly also fades away. Maybe we're the soil that's covered in weeds. So much so that there's just not any room in our life for anything new, for any new words or insights or inspirations. We just keep doing the same old thing over and over. And pretty soon, any new idea or, or challenge or, or concept, it just, it just dies. Because we haven't made room in our heart or our life for anything new that God might show us about ourselves or our world. Or maybe with work and practice and patience, we can be the healthy soil, allowing our lives, our hearts, our spirits to have new ideas, to seek faith and grow deeper, and allow God to really grow something wonderful and special within our hearts and lives. So it's very important as we think about this analogy that Jesus is teaching, these metaphors that he's using about you and I to decide what kind of dirt are we. 
we have a choice. Um, as humans, we can take the word of God and we can allow those seeds to, to take root in our life. And we can make choices that allow us to intentionally allow the dirt and the seeds that God has intended for us in his lessons and his scripture to sow in our life new life and grow well and thrive. They can germinate and grow new things and transform us. I'm, a, I'm not a gardener, so some of these metaphors are hard for me because things, I tell my fam family and friends, don't buy me plants, just be kind to the plants, let someone else take care of them. I'm not a green thumb. But what God showed me that day with a little dandelion in my shoe is that I didn't have to be a gardener. I didn't have to know anything. I just had to trust in God to see a new creation come. I hate to say it, but I love the metaphor of the shoe because if you allow even something old to be repurposed, to be renewed, God will give it a new life. We start out like that shoe, brand new and young and healthy and fit and full of color and flexibility. But as we age, we get a little muddy, we get a little grungy, we get a little tired and worn. But God doesn't see that part. He just sees us as wonderful, used, and maybe hopefully smarter adults. He wants us to grow in grace and no matter how old or beat up or rugged we've become, God, the gentle gardener, wants us to have new ideas. He wants us to try new things and see things in a different way, to look at ourselves deeply and challenge us to grow, even in our older years. It's important to know that Jesus always provides new information. The Word of God is full of illustrations that if we look at them carefully and analyze how that fits for us, we will be challenged to change and grow. So God's word, that seed that the sower was planting, needs good dirt. And the good dirt comes in our hearts, in our souls, in our minds, as we allow change and transformation to occur because of God's word and because of Jesus' call in our life to be transformed. God knows we have challenges. God knows that sometimes we lose our way. God knows that sometimes we need gen Jesus' gentle nudge, his gentle gardening hand to prune us a bit. He's promised that the Spirit of God will be with us forever to help us see what needs to change. God can see the beauty in each of us and each of our lives as we allow his spirit to transform us, allow us to become fertile ground, allow us to become good dirt. Jesus taught us that anything that we allow to plant and take root will bring forth good fruit. In spite of what we might see on the outside of all of us, our father, who's our mother, who is God of creation and all of the world, he created all things, who is the loving gardener. He's nurtured our life and brought us to this day today that we might hear this message of hope and say, I still have time to change. I can still be that good dirt that allows things of health and wellness and spirit and love and joy to grow. Jesus, our savior, spreads his words of truth. Each and every time we read his scripture, each and every time we hear his still small voice in our prayer time, each and every time we act in kindness and love rather than anger or distress. We can be renewed. We are renewed by our baptisms. And if we place our hearts in a vulnerable way, that seed will find it and take root within it. And we will be forever grateful for that gentle gardener that teaches us love and shows us that no matter how far we've come, he can take us the rest of the way to renew and provide us with grace and peace. Amen. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for your patience and your presence with us. We're so grateful to have you as part of our church community.
We're open every Sunday at 1030. We welcome you to come and join us. We still have lots and lots of room, plenty of room to socially distance if you're still worried or if you've had some challenges with COVID. What a blessing it is to be one with you and with God. We thank you for your presence and for your prayers with us. Please, as the week continues, may you be blessed. And may we hope to see you at one of our events, either at the League of Women Voters event or maybe at our Crafts Fair coming up next weekend. Come and join us and rejoice in God's work here in La Habra. May God bless you and keep you. And may you be one with him and one with us. Amen. <laughs>